Well, welcome everyone to our webinar today. I'm Donald McCormick and I will be your host for today. We're going to be recording the session, so you'll get a link to it um, when it's ready, well, as soon as it's ready after the webinar. And if you have any questions as we go along, then type them into the chat window. We'll try to have got a couple of people on who can respond to those in chat, um, or we can perhaps get to them Q&A at the end if there is time. If we don't get time to your question, we will make sure we follow up afterwards with uh, with answers. Now, as, sure, as I'm sure you're all aware that we pride ourselves here at Squirrel on the, on the fact that Squirrel can be used to build amazing things from spreadsheets with no code, absolutely no code. But today is a little different because what we're talking about is building add-ons for Squirrel. And add-ons allow those of us with some coding skills to extend the possibilities of Squirrel so that everyone else can do even more with no code. So the content today is a little more technical than usual, but very powerful uh, for it. And to guide us through this world of add-ons is Matt Dulligal, who is a key member of our development team and also author of a number of the add-ins already available in the Squirrel marketplace. Matt, it's all yours. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Donald. Uh, yeah, welcome everyone to the, the webinar today. What we're going to be looking at is building your first Squirrel 365 add-on. Um, <clears throat> So we'll get started. So what we're going to cover in this session today, we'll do a, a very brief overview of the framework. Uh, then we'll look at the uh, developer program and how you get signed up. Uh, then we're going to look at the Squirrel 365 uh, add-on documentation, where you can get it, how to navigate it. Uh, then we'll briefly look at setting up your environment and testing. Uh, we'll look at some of the, uh, the internals of building um, a component, and we'll talk about the differences between a function component and a, just a, a normal visual component. Um, we'll actually, with the time we've got, we'll try and get a, a full component built. Um, and then what we'll do is um, go through publishing it to the Squirrel 365 marketplace so you can see the full end to end and hopefully give you um, a good starting point to, to, to get you going on building add ons for Squirrel. So the add on uh, framework, what is it? Well, the, uh, the Squirrel team. It's, it's, it's a framework that allows the Squirrel team to release new components between our core release cycles. So we're, we're releasing sort of quarterly. This allows us to actually get new components into the hands of people a lot quicker. We can build them in an isolated way, test them and then get them out to, to people. Also, we find if there's some some of our customers who who need something fairly niche, it's not really going to it's not suitable for the wider uh, community, squirrel community. We can actually build something and give it to them as a private add on and then they can use it. And we'll discuss a little bit about private and public add ons a bit later on. And then obviously, as, as we're now releasing this framework out into the wild, um, we're hoping that a lot of our users of Squirrel will be able to build their own components to service their specific needs, either as a, uh, a private add-on or a public add-on for the, for the wider community. But we're quite excited to see um, what our community starts to build with this. So how does it work? Um, very briefly, the core of Squirrel, each add-on um, is a is an iframe and it has the functionality to send and receive messages from uh, from Squirrel to the to the add-on. The add-on itself is actually a standalone project that has the functionality built into it to actually send messages from from the add-on to Squirrel. So as I say, it's a completely standalone project, so you can really build whatever you want with that add-on just with a common interface that that will talk to Squirrel to send and receive messages. So really, the sky's the limit. You can you can go crazy on building stuff. So the next thing, the developer program. Um, in order to get started on this, what you need to do in your Squirrel account, you go to your account manager and on the bottom left, you'll see a developer portal. Um, so to get started, you just put in your first and last name and your company name is optional. Um, at the moment, there's an early access code uh, towards the end of the month that's going to be removed. But for now, um, you need to put in the early access code and that will get you um, into the program. Um, the early access code will be, um, I'll display that at the end. So if, if you stay through to the end, you'll get that. And if you do need to drop off at any point, as Donald said earlier, the, the video will be um, sent to you later on and, and that code will be there to help you get started and up and running a bit quicker than the rest. OK, so where to find the Squirrel add-on documentation? Um, there's a, a link there you can follow or uh, scan that QR code and that will take you to it. It's got a, a load of different things that are covered in there. Initially, there's a bit about how to sign up, which I've already briefly mentioned. There's a lot in there about how the framework works, um, how the communication works between Squirrel and your add-on, how to prepare data um, to send across um, from, from your add-on back into Squirrel. Awful lot of information there. Then there's some bits on property panels. We're very proud of these. Um, the way this 
this works is the the property panels in your add-ons will work uh, look and work and feel exactly the same as the native um, uh, components in squirrel um, so the way we've done it we've got some information there that tells you how to set them up um, specifically how to to um, structure your JSON to show you exactly how to build those panels and then we've got um, an element library full of um, um, elements that you can use in your property panel along with a whole load of uh, customizable um, properties that you can change and that's all in the documentation and we'll be using that during this demo today so you hopefully you'll get a feel of that um, there's another section in publishing so when you come to actually publish your um, add-on at the end there's a few things you need to do to be able to put it up into the marketplace there's a bit of bit of text about what you need to put up there um, and an icon that's going to be um, available inside of squirrel so when people um, add it uh, add the component into their project um, and some other bits and pieces but we've got some documentation in there to, to cover all of those those sides of things as well which i'll show you a bit later on and then we've got some getting started code the stuff that's going to uh, you know not starting with a, a, a blank um, uh, paper you've just got you've got some actual code to get you started so we'll show you that as well right to set up your environment set up you know, setting up your environment and testing so there's four simple things that you need to do probably recommend you do it kind of in this order. First of all, you're going to need a Squirrel license, version 112 or above. Obviously, 112 is the latest, so um, that's you now. Um, the next thing, uh, again, I'm sorry on that as well, You, um, it's uh, for the free plan or the pay for plan is absolutely fine as long as you've got that. The next thing you'll need to do is install Node. So um, you can follow that link there, um, show you here, go to the Node website, click on this box here, it'll download and install that to your system and you're good to go there. The next thing you'll need is an IDE to do your coding in. Um, we use and recommend uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, it's free and it's really, really good. Um, you can follow the link there to your to, to this website, download it, install it, and you're good to go there. Um, you're not limited to that. Obviously, if there's an IDE that you currently use and you prefer, you're fine, no problem at all. And then the uh, the last thing is you need the add-on starter code, so you're not really starting from a, a, a clean sheet. You've got you've got something there to start off with. So in our documentation, we've got three um, three sort of starters that you can do. One is an Angular one, uh, one is uh, 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 plain JavaScript, and then there's an Angular uh, a React one that's coming shortly. So there's actually two at the moment. This particular one today we're going to be doing is with the Angular um, base, and this link here will take you to that. So let me just show you the documentation a minute. So this is the uh, the documentation that we've got here. The, the website will take you to. Um, we've got all all the sort of information that we that, that would be useful to get you up and running and started. Um, and I mentioned the Angular one, so let's look at that now. Building a first add-on. So here we go. This is where we can clone our um, uh, the repository. So I'm going to copy that for now. And that's pretty much it for the slides. Now we're going to get stuck into the uh, the coding side of things so if i jump to first things first um just go to where you want to um set up your project um open up vs code and uh, the first thing we need in our terminal is just to paste in that git command there so if we press that that'll go off and download it for us um just shut that back and show you here so what that's done is it's downloaded our, our code here we can actually rename that if we want to but we start jump in into the folder and open the VS code again. Right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get um, all the dependencies down for this particular project. So the dependencies are all in your package JSON. We don't need to look at that today, but just to show you that's that's where they are. So what we're going to do is we just do npm install. NPM install. This won't work if you haven't uh, installed that uh, node. So I'd, I'd say I'd follow the steps that I put in that previous slide. So we NPM install. What that's doing now is it's pulling down all the dependencies that we need and getting the, the project ready to go. And the next thing that we will do is once that's all ready to go, is we can actually spin up this project on a local sort of server. And then what we can do is we can jump into Squirrel and we can bring in this um, basic component and start working with it. So that's ready to go there. What we're going to do now is um, npm run start. Um, again, these commands, you have to remember them. They are all in the documentation. So we'll get that going. It, you'll see here it, it puts on port 4401. And um, give this a chance to spin up. Doesn't take very long at all on this uh, little project. Um, 
Right, here we go. So it's ready to go. So we can just copy this URL here. And we'll take that. And let's jump into Squirrel. OK, so when you um, sign up to the developer program, you'll notice uh, there's a new thing down on the left side in the component library under add-ons. You've got this add-on developer program. What you do is you just click and bring, bring that onto the, the canvas. And now this is what we're going to be using to, as we build out our add-on, to actually test it live, and we can see exactly what's happening with it. So if we look on onto the right-hand side of the property panel, you can ignore this top section, which is the uh, X and Y and width and height of this, and you can ignore the dynamic visibility. That's all just coming. It's this piece that we're working in here at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll paste in that um, URL, um, remembering that forward slash. That's a bit of a gotcha there. Make sure that's there, and then um, let's get JSON files. So what we've got now, this is actually loaded up your add-on. This is the, the default basis starting starting add-on that's that's been uh, loaded, and we've got these um, uh, a basic property panel set up. Um, so if we have a quick look at that, what this property panel entails, we've got a text area which is bindable, just like normal Squirrel components. Um, we can actually type in it. And we can see that's actually updated there. And then we've got another field down here um, with a, a title of Hello World response. Uh, it's bindable, but actually if I click into it, I cannot edit it. OK, so what this is really showing as a, as a starter is that we can put some um, data into the component and we can see it represented there. And we've got this here, which looks like we can bind it um, to get some information out. So let's just do that a minute. And bind this one to this cell here. I'm going to bind the output to that cell there. I've got a, a text input here, which has nothing to do with the add-on framework. It's just been put in here. So as I type something into this in a minute, it's bound to this top cell. It'll write into there, which will in turn feed the add-on component here. So let's have a quick look at that. If I type in hello. We can see that that's actually gone into the component and it's displayed. And then the output from the component has actually come down in here and all it's done, it's very simple. It's just taken what's been sent in, capitalized it and sent it back out. But it's a, a good example of showing you how to send something into your add-on, processing it and sending it back out. OK, so um, with that said, let's have a little look behind the scenes at what's going on. Um, so here is our code here. So the main add-on itself, um, we'll be looking at in a minute, which is uh, inside this app folder here. But initially, the property panel, um, the property panel stuff that we need to do to set up, we, there's three main files we need to look at. Default um, state JSON, message binding JSON, and property panel JSON. Again, don't worry if you don't remember all these. Again, it's very clearly marked in the documentation, but I want to explain what all these do. So default state, this is what you're going to do initially to set up your properties. These are properties that you want to make Squirrel aware of that um, these are probably going to, you're going to pass from Squirrel to the add-on and back. So we declare all these properties here. So that you you name these what you want. But in this demo, it's called Hello World Data, and we've set up the the default. Say so the default value is test. We've got another um, property here, Hello World Response, which is uh, declared as empty. So that's all we do. We just need to make sure we've got one of these for each of the properties that we're going to be sending backwards and forwards between Squirrel and your add-on. The next one is message bindings. So message bindings, this is um, where we can actually tell Squirrel, OK, of those properties that we've declared, this is exactly the sort of direction of communication between Squirrel and your add-on. And it's, this is this is done from the, 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 the viewpoint of the add-on itself. So for the property that we declared earlier, Hello World Data, the add-on is going to receive this information from Squirrel. So as we saw earlier, I typed in Hello and it sent it in. This particular one, um, the Hello World response, it is um, a piece of data that we're going to send from the add-on to Squirrel. So we just have to declare one of these for each of the properties, and we just and we say whether it's a receive or send. You can also have one that is both, um, and that's obviously um, you know useful if you're doing sort of two-way two-way communication. So we'll say, leave that as um, send for now. So, right. And then the final one is the property panel. So this one looks a little bit more involved, but don't let it, um, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be too overwhelming. So what, we, what we're looking at here is um, if I grab Squirrel again, it's quite straightforward. We've got something here, which is an accordion with a title of general, and it's got um, 
two child elements. One is a text area and one is this input here. Um, so if we look at the JSON structure here, we've got this accordion with a uh, property of the name is general. And then we can see it, it's uh, collapsed is set to false, so it's not collapsed by default. And it's got some uh, a children object here, an array of, of different objects. And we've got those two objects that we saw in here. So um, if we look at these now, you've got um, an input box or two input boxes. The first one's got the text of hello world text as our label. We've said allow binding is set to true. So we know we can bind it. We've got the allow manual entry of true when we try to type in it. And then we've got text area set to true as well. So we can, um, uh, it's, a, it's an actual text area. Whereas the second one, we see allow binding is true, but the allow manual entry is false. And that's why we couldn't actually type in it. So you don't have to remember these and work out and try and remember how this sort of structure works. As I said, it's all in the documentation. So let me give you a quick example of that. So if we go into, um, Ooh, where am I going? Uh, here we go. Property panel, panel elements. First of all, the accordion. You can see here it tells you exactly this is what it looks like. So you get a little image of what the accordion looks like. You can see what the um, what it's what the structure is supposed to be like. So you've got accordion, property, general, and then children. And then you can obviously cut and paste that into your project and then start adding child elements. So the child elements be an input box is one of the ones we're using here. So as you can see, if we look at this, you can copy and paste that directly in, but we've got a lot more. Um, properties here than we actually used in our oops, excuse me um, in our example. Um, what's this? Uh, a lot more, so we've only got a few in here. Um, but if we look through the documentation, you can scroll down. You can see all of these are configurable properties that you can um, you can set. And there's obviously information about each of them. So the text area, we set one of them to true, but the default's false, which is why we left it off on the other one. So you can go through and look at these properties. I encourage you to look at each of the, com the elements that we've got, work through the different properties um, and experiment uh, with them. OK, so that's essentially the um, that basic property uh, panel built out. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually look at the, um, the so that's property panels. Now we're looking at the actual add-on itself. So there are two files in here. The first one is Squirrel Helper. I'll briefly touch on this. This one is basically got a class that's got all of the stuff that we, that we need in there for all the communication to Squirrel and back. And it's um, uh, there's a lot of different um, helper methods and things that you can use in here. When you come to start building add-ons, you don't need to do anything in this in this um, file at all. It's literally there for you to review because we're using some of the methods in here in our in our current add-on, but there are other ones there that are available for you to use. So it's here for you to look through um, and and be aware of, but you don't really need to touch anything in here. So add-on, this is where we're working, and if we look at um, the add-on. We can see that this add on class extends the squirrel helper class so we can use all of those methods inside inside here. So let's just do a quick um, jump around in here and have a look at what's going on. So first of all, we've got this uh, initialize. So when your your component first initializes, this is a, a lifecycle hook of the ang uh, the angular component. Um, when it first initializes, it's going to call this function, which lives inside of um, uh, the squirrel helper and it's basically the thing that kicks off and starts that kind of handshake with squirrel so you don't need to do anything there that just goes off and does its thing when squirrel then um, has f sort of finished that handshaking procedure it calls um, this next method which again is uh, one in the squirrel helper we've just overridden it here so you don't have to do anything with it it calls this method from squirrel it calls into the add-on calls this and passes in the state now the state is that default state that we set up initially on um, the, the default state json so it's passing in all of your properties with all of their default values so that you can then make sure that your add-on is in that initialized or you know your initial state that you want it so we do a quick check to make sure the states come in is actually valid was is equal to something and then we can start processing that processing that data all we've really sent in this state is this hello world data so it's, it's quite a simple example but if you were building a, a more complex one you might have obviously a lot more properties that will come in and you can um, get everything set up here um, the next thing you have in here is this on property change, and it pretty much does exactly what it says there. It's it's something that if any of those properties um, do change, um, either by a user interacting with them, um, 
in design time or if you're actually at runtime, um, you know, sending some something in that changes any of those values, um, then what will happen is that property, it, it, um, Squirrel will call this on property change, pass the name of the property that's changed and the value that, that it now is set to. So it's quite straightforward in here. We've got a switch statement. You just do a case for every single one of the properties that you want to listen for. So um, the hello world data, obviously, the, when I typed in the word hello, it changed from what the default was, which was nothing. And it came in and it said, right, okay, well, that property's changed and the new value is value. And so I'm just calling this little method to process it. We'll, we'll look at that method in a minute. So this first part is what you do on initialization. And then this is what actually happens once the component is initialized and it's up and running and, and having sort of data coming in um, from Squirrel. This little method that we've been seeing here, process data, this is not part of the framework. This is just li literally for this particular um, example is a method that's been written, process data. And this is what you would do when you build your, your add-on. You would actually have your own set of methods in here for processing all of your different bits of pieces of data that come in. Um, so this one's just, uh, just showing you an example. We've got, we've got one called process data. It takes in a single string. Um, and what we've done here is on initialization, we're passing in what we get from Hello World data into that so it can process it. And also if Hello World data uh, changes at any point, um, we're also calling that and sending that value in. And all it's doing here is it's setting a variable that we've declared up here, Hello World text, to equal to the value that we sent in. So I typed in Hello earlier, so Hello would come in and this variable would now contain that. We're using that in the HTML part of this, and I'll show you that in a sec. But we, we saw when we demoed that, demo that just now, um, it takes a value in and then the, the add-on processes that value and then spits it back out to, um, to Squirrel. And it's a really simple uh, process. So this is another uh, method that's available to you in the Squirrel helper. So all you do is this dot send to Squirrel, the name of the property that you wanna send, um, send information back on and, uh, and then the actual value of it. So all we've done here is very simple. We've taken the value of hello and we've used that JavaScript um, function there to do um, to uppercase. So just capitalizing it and then spitting that back out to Squirrel. And we saw that working earlier. So very, very simple for you to send that back, to send information back. Um, if you're doing things um, with like multiple um, rows and columns and all the rest of it, you obviously need to um, make sure that your data is in the in the in the right structure to send back. That is all contained in the um, the documentation and explains exactly how to do that. So that will allow you to um, um, you know send send it back. So you know definitely have a look at the information um, there. Um, then the next thing we got your CSS. So we've got some basic stuff in here. This is sort of Angular host. There's the host element. So some of the CSS on that. Um, but obviously, if you're building something, um, something quite large, you may ha ha well have a um, load of different CSS um, classes that you can specify in here. So you just do that as you would normally do when you're coding. Um, and then you've got the HTML. So if I look at the HTML at the moment, it looks maybe looks a little bit overwhelming just for this demo. But if we if we jump back to here and look at it, we've kind of got a box, we've got a drop shadow, we've got an image, we've got this text and on the bottom. The only thing we're really interested in at the moment is, is what's happening with this hello world and, and, and that text that comes in here. So you can kind of ignore this. It's just built to give you something to see on the screen. The, the important part is down here in this div here. So we've got hello world text and that string is always there. And then that hello world text that I uh, variable that we set in the TS file um, and we made it equal to the value that came in. All we do in order to display that is wrap that hello world text, that variable inside double curly braces, and then that will appear inside of um, inside of the component. OK, spelling off right. Um, the next thing I want to show you is just how you go about um, debugging stuff. So if you are wanting to, um, um, as you're working through with this, if you want to actually do some debugging, what you can do um, is, let me show you this first. Um, so some of you may be aware of your developer console, so we can go local, local host 8, uh, 8315. And if you spin that up, you get these two options here. If you select the local host 4401, this basically is uh, anything that's coming out of the, the add-on, you can actually, you can trace out what's going on. So 
all the messages that we're seeing here are actually coming out of the, the Squirrel helper at the moment. But for us, if in our component here, we want to put something in. So I might want to do a console log and see what's actually happening with this value. Value is, and then trace out that value. So let's save that. If I bring this back and look here, you can see value is my dodgy spelling. But if I um, change that again to something else, hello, you can see value is hello. So that's simply how you can do your, um, um, do basic uh, console logging out while you're actually working on your file. So that is that, and I think that's pretty much covered most of the, the stuff to get you up and running with a, with this basic um, component. I did mention at the start that I was going to talk about the differences between a, um, um, a normal component, visual component, and a function component. So when you, a function component essentially is any component that doesn't have a visual element to it. So the visual components, they all appear, add-ons appear in this, in, in your, um, library over here on the left, but any functions appear in the drop down here. The add-on functions will appear in, down in here. So the way to differentiate between it, um, there's no real differentiation when we first start building. So to build um, a function add-on, you do it in exactly the same way, the same stubby code, and we'll convert this one now into a function so you can see exactly how that works. Very simply, all we do is we come into the HTML, grab everything and delete it. We go into the CSS, grab everything and delete it. OK, now if we go back into. Into Squirrel, we're seeing nothing in here. Don't worry about this box that when it's a function that won't appear anyway. Um, and now what we can do is we can type in hello. And you can see that the content is still gone into the add on. It's been processed and come back out. So now it is essentially a function. And when we come to publish later on, I'll show you the difference there. You, you can specify this as a function rather than a component. And then at that time when you set that, whether which one it is, it'll obviously appear in either the, the component library on the left or in the functions drawer. So very, very simple and straightforward. The functions will be an interesting one. I think it'd be good for you to look through some of the functions that we have already. Um, in the actual product, as well as some of the the add-ons to get some ideas, but I do, I do feel that there's a an opportunity for some of the uh, our customers who have got some really big, large-scale projects where they've got big chunks of data coming in with lots of formulas to kind of process some of that data and then moving things around and all the rest of it. You could get to a point where you might say, right, well, actually, you know, this is we're using several data movers and we're using a whole load of functions to do something. If you've got some sort of development capability in-house, you could say, right, well, I'm going to pass you this chunk of data into an add-on. I want to process all this stuff, and then I want you to spit that, that you know, different chunks of that data out as, as some of the, the outputs here. Obviously not a component that would be something useful to lots of different people, but something that might be specific to your to your company. So there are lots of different ways to use that, um, that the function component. So it'll be interesting to see what people start to do with it. Right. Um, I think that's pretty much covered all of that. I need to jump into um, building the uh, the actual component now. So what we're going to do is um, for this particular demo, I've decided to look at using um, Bootstrap. Some of you may be familiar with um, Bootstrap. Um, it's uh, people use it for building all sorts of websites. You've got layout options and different components. What I'm looking at today is this pill badges one. So the pill badges. Um, but pill badges basically are colored text elements that are uh, containing small bits of information and they're used for labeling content, displaying metadata or sort of highlighting information. Now, you could look at this and say, well, I could build this in Squirrel already. You know, I could use a rectangle around a rectangle um, as one component. I could put a label over the top of it um, and group it together. Brilliant. And that would work. But if you then started dynamically changing the text, you'd obviously need to make sure that your label grew accordingly. You'd need to make sure that if the label grew, you'd want the rectangle to size accordingly and what have you. So it can be a bit fiddly. So this makes sense to potentially be a small component we, we build. And looking at here, some of the options, we'd obviously want to be able to um, set the text that we want to put in there. Um, it makes sense to maybe use these kind of default colors that they have here. So we could maybe do a drop down that's got these in here. We could do the um, the font, allow them to change the font and the size of the font. 
and maybe the padding. Um, and I think to make it a bit more squir squirrely, what we could do is actually put a, an additional item in the drop down to sort of say uh, custom so that then the user can specify what their background color and what their foreground color is. So that's kind of the little mini project we want to try and get done in about half an hour. Um, and I think we have got about half an hour to do it. So um, I'm aware of everyone's time. I'll do my best to get it done in that time. If if we do go over it a little bit, as I say, it is recorded. So if you do need to drop on the hour, um, we will send the video um, afterwards. Right. So um, let's get going. Um, let me see, move this out of the way. I'll stop running this project. Right, so what I've done, um, not quite here is one I made earlier, um, but sample. Here we go. Right, so this is basically um, another one. It's I've, I've brought out the stubby code um, and got that one up and running, ready to go. Um, we'll get that one running now and bring it back into Squirrel. forward slash again that should be ready okay so there's nothing showing and we've got no um, property panel so that's great that's the starting point so we'll look first at setting our property panel up so default json's our starting point so i think the first thing we're going to need in our um, component we need to have the uh, the text for the pill so default text of pill badge so we're going to make up some properties we want a text property we want some padding set it to five um, then um, that type. So we had different types. So we had the uh, primary, secondary, success, danger, whatever. So we'll set our default type as primary. Um, then the next thing we need to do is um, look at the font. So let's have a look at the documentation. How do we do font in here? So we can scroll down, look for font. Um, the font box, this is imaging. So if we add a font element into our property panel, this is what we're going to get. Looking at this now, I think we for this component, let's keep it fairly simple. We just want the font and we want the size. So if we look at the state definition, I've got this here, which I can copy and paste directly into my project. Now, um, there's another thing that we use with the properties as well. I mean, here you can see it's a, a single property and a, and a value, but we can actually build up these properties and group things up. And then we, when we refer to them later on, we can actually use dot notation. There's a lot of information on that in the documentation on how to do that, but you'll see this as I go here. So I'm going to make a style property here, and it's an object round rather than just a just a single value. I'm going to paste in what we just grabbed for the font. I might change that to title because it's the title of the pill and if i look through all this sort of default stuff i'm happy to leave most of this as is i might set the size to 18 make it a bit bigger and the pill alignment left doesn't make sense i'll make it center um and there we go so that's the first one um then the next thing is we said um if they were to choose anything other than the the primary um selections there if we, if we chose a custom one we want to be able to um get some custom colors in so we want our users to be able to choose the custom colors with a color picker. So if we look at color input, color picker, if we use that element, we're going to get this little box come up, which you may be familiar with in Squirrel. Then they can actually type in a hex value or click on it and select something. So if we look at the state definition for, for these, um, we declare the name of the property. We've got type, solid, color, and all the rest of it. So it's quite straightforward. We can copy and paste that. I've got ones that I made here, which I'll bring in. So I'll paste that in here. So I've got one called custom color, which I'm going to use for my background. If they use a, 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 a uh, if they choose custom, we can use a custom background of black. And then I've got a custom font color where we use white. OK, so that is essentially our default state done. What we need to do now is um, look at our message binding. Um, so we'll keep let's keep that to the right so we can actually see that as we go. So as I said earlier, for every single one of these properties that we've built here, we do need to set up the message binding so that Squirrel knows um, the, the direction of communication on this. So um, let me bring this across here. 
Um, unlike our original demo, we're not sending anything back into Squirrel on this one. It's all pretty much um, receiving from Squirrel. So we're going to receive the text property. We're going to receive the padding, the type, and the style. So that's it there, saved, um, done. Um, and then the last one is the property panel. So obviously this one's going to be a little bit bigger. Um, so what we'll do um, to start off with is we'll grab. We need that, that accordion to start us off with. So we've got an accordion with general, an input box, text for our sort of pill label. We're going to allow binding, we allow manual entry, and then we're binding this property to our text property, text, text. So that's that done. Um, you could just keep adding all your children, all the other um, boxes and elements to this one. But if you want to kind of group it up a little bit and try and neaten it up a bit, then you can do multiple accordions. So let's do another accordion. Uh, we'll set this one to style. Um, and then um, it's an input box. This is going to be for our padding. Or padding. Um, allow binding, yes. And we want to set it to the padding property there. So if I just save that a minute as we get going, I'll bring in Squirrel, get JSON files. And so what you'll find here is that every time we make an adjustment to the, the property panel side of things inside your code, you do need to press get JSON files to bring the latest across. OK. Um, the other stuff to do with the add-on, which we'll get into later, when you edit that, they'll just do it automatically. But anything to the property panel, you will need to get JSON files and bring in the latest. So we've got our, our text and we've got our padding. But this box is just a, a box you could type any old thing into it. So I think just we can add a little bit to this. So if we look at our documentation again, we can see for the input box, there are an awful lot of different properties we can use here. So I'm going to throw a few more properties in on, on that box right now. Um, I'm going to use, um, let's do this. Right, so I've got one uh, type I've set to integer. I've got an uh, uh, allow counter set to true, so it's going to add little arrows on the, on the side of the box. I've set a maximum value that I'm allowing that to go to. 1,000 seems a bit excessive on uh, padding, but we'll leave that there. And then um, what we want the stepper to move on. So it's going to be one one um, one step at a time. And then we've also got this um, short property name you can put in. And I'll show you how that, what that looks like. So if we refresh again here, you can see now this box has changed slightly. So we've got the little PX there, so we know that the padding is in pixels. And then as we hover over it, you now have got these up and down arrows. We can't actually type any words in here now because it knows it's only accepting integers and we can actually go up in in steps uh, one at a time sort of thing on there. So it adds a little bit of finesse to your thing and also helps you with some of the validation. So you don't have to worry about people typing in um, you know, text and then handling that. Right, the next thing we need to do is a drop down. Um, again, we can look at the uh, documentation drop downs. We see what they look like. Um, the structure we need here. So I'm going to grab that. I've got one already with those different um, options that we needed. So we'll throw that in here. Um, that will be in here. So, right, so we've got uh, it's a type drop down. Um, we've got the label name, badge type, um, what property we're binding to type. So it's obviously this type property. And the default we set is primary. So prime, uh, primary here. If we obviously make a selection in any one of these, then type is going to be equal to whatever the, the option is that's selected. Um, so that's uh, save that. Do one more quick view on here. Get the JSON files. We now have that drop down. So it's simple as that. OK, the next thing you want to see in here is the um, the color pickers, but it doesn't make any sense to have color pickers here all the time, because if we choose any one of these, we're going to be using the internal colors that we're going to specify in the code. But if we use custom, then we do want to see those there. So this kind of introduces us nicely to the custom um, custom block. Uh, custom logic block. So if you look in the help section again, uh, could, sorry, uh, conditional logic block. Um, so quite straightforward. We copy this block in and what it does is it says, well, which property we're we watching? We're watching the type property um, and when it equals to something, not URL. In our case, it would be when it equals custom, then show anything that's in these in the um, in the children array here. So quite straightforward. I'm going to grab that now and bring that. In. Second. Right, so we've got a conditional block. As I said, type equals custom. 
and then if, if that's true, show the children. And the children, we've just got um, uh, two bits here for showing the, the, the color, uh, color picker. I showed you that earlier in the documentation, so you can see exactly what's going on here. But we've got one with a label of custom background color. Um, we've bound the property. This is where that dot notation bit comes in, as I mentioned earlier. So we can say instead of, um, you know, um, we've got style dot um, custom color. So obviously we, we'd, we're referencing style dot custom color. So that's <clears throat> where it's getting it from using the dot notation. And then we've got the second one, which is um, custom font color and obviously accessing style or custom font color. Um, and we've turned the opacity off on this one. So the first one should have an opacity, the second one shouldn't. So let's just save that and test that in uh, Squirrel so we can see that working. So initially we shouldn't see anything happening here because we're on primary. But if we go down to custom, we now see that those are, are showing and you've got the uh, the first one, which is for the background with the color, the opacity, and then the font we just got on its own there. So those are ready to go there. The very last thing we need to get in our property panel is our um, the, the font selection. We want to be able to change the font. And so for this one, I'm going to introduce you to another element, which is the sub accordion. And this is just something you can place inside your accordions again to try and organize and manage um, your uh, property panel. So it's of type sub accordion. We've given the label of font. And then this this information here is what we pulled in from um, from the docs. So again, um, as I said earlier, we're going to keep it quite simple. So you can see our, our things like has bold, has italics are set to false. So it should keep it very, very simple in the panel. So we'll save that and last look at this and refresh. And here we've got the font fonts section is here and that's a little, little uh, sub accordion inside of the style accordion there. And we can change the fonts and we can change the size and what have you in there. So that's it. So we can kind of build up our, our, our um, property panel and we can see and test as we go and see that it looks like it's, it's, you know, it's working as we expect. Once we've done all that, we can now go into the code and get all this sort of wired up. So that is our. Um, all these sides sort of done and dusted the, re the rest, we can actually jump into the um, the add on now. Um, so let's jump across to there. So. What we've got. I'll have a quick look at the HTML first. So the HTML for this is quite straightforward. Um, what we've got here is a div um, with a, a class that we've made, which I'll show you in a sec, of pill badge. Um, you can see this display text, a bit like our Hello World example earlier. Um, we're going to be bringing in um, whatever the pill text is, um, setting it to this display text uh, variable in our TS file, and then it will a display in here. Um, so that's the uh, that's the HTML, quite simple. If we look at the CSS for that, firstly we've got that normal host element, um, and we've set the to inline block, and we obviously the white space no wrap. We don't want it to wrap; it's a pill. We want it to all be on one line. <clears throat> the next thing you can see in here is I've declared a load of um, CSS variables. So. Um, you can call these whatever you like, but obviously given fairly descriptive names is helpful. So I've gone background color and I've set its uh, default value here. So I've set all those values. And then in the class that I made um, for that, that div, we've got width, height, and border radius set. But for the rest of these things, things like the padding and the background color and all the rest of it that we want to pass in, the fonts and stuff, we're using making use of these CSS variables. So what that allows us to do in a minute is to go into our TS file. We can then bring the values in from Squirrel and then assign those values to these CSS variables, which will obviously in turn up, up, update the CSS here. And then in turn, we'll see that reflected in the, in, in the HTML. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so if we go into the uh, TS file, we'll jump over this. It should look relatively sim uh, similar to what we did in the other one. There's a few extra bits in here. So we've got that display text defined, uh, that variable that we can use and we're using in the HTML. Um, in the constructor this time, I've got this. Um, I put element element ref in here, and that basically is allowing us to make to get a reference to the native element of this component, which we can do to set the properties. I'll show you that in a sec. We've got the basic um, uh, initialization, which we don't need to touch. We've got the on it. So this is when it's done the handshake and Squirrel has now called this method and said, here you go. Here's your default state for this component. So what we're doing here is we're setting the display text to state dot text. I've still got this up over here so we can see it. So state dot text. So it's, it's getting um, the value of that. 
here we're, we're still um, getting, uh, sorry, hitting state and getting the padding value, but we're trying to set that padding variable inside the CSS. So what we're going to do here is we do this dot element ref dot native element dot style dot set property, the name of the actual um, CSS variable we're trying to hit, and then we pass in the value that's come in from Squirrel. Um, padding itself in your CSS, you know, as you may know, it needs to have a, um, uh, it's, you know, padding of five isn't going to work. It needs to be padding five PX. So I'm just concatenating a PX on the end of that so that that variable is set up correctly. Font family doesn't need anything on it. It's just whatever we passed in. Um, so we set up those variables there and we're good to go there. The next bit here, processing the, the pill badge type. So that type drop down. Um, there, we're going to be calling this particular thing a few times, so it makes sense to actually make a method rather than um, duplicating code everywhere in, in, in this add-on. So I've got this add-on here, which just passes in the state, so, uh, sorry, this method here that passes in, that we pass a state into it. So let's have a look at that. Quite straightforward. Again, this is one we've written. It's not part of the framework. It's just a method that you, we've written. So we pass state into it. We've got some little uh, local variables set for background for and opacity. Um, and it's a simple switch statement again, and it's basically looking at the state dot type. So if if the uh, user is selected primary, we jump in here, we go to the primary, we set the background color to this blue hex value here, and then drop out the statement down to here. And um, let's get this for the debugging. And then what we do here is, um, we set the um, background color CSS variable to the background color that's been set, the opacity and font color. If, for argument's sake, the user had selected the custom instead of any one of these, it would drop down into the custom one where we would have overridden all the, the background, the opacity, and the font color. Um, and we'll set those to using the dot notation again using uh, the values that have been sent in from Squirrel. So those get set, and then we just drop in here and set those. Um, uh, CSS variables accordingly. It's quite straightforward there, I think. Um, and I'm trying to go through this fairly quickly, so um, we will um, again send out the the code for this as well, so you can kind of work through it in slow time and have a look. And we'll try and put some more commenting in here as well. Um, but I appreciate it's a lot to sort of take in um, and while I'm rabbiting away. Um, the next thing we had to do was the on property change. So that was that was the initialization setup. That was done at the start. Then we got property change, as we said earlier in the other example. If any one of those properties change at any point, on property change gets called, giving the the, the current property that, that that's um, that's been sent in and the um, the value of that property. So here we've got one for text, for padding, for type. Um, we can use the dot notation to actually reach in and, and, and target specifically some of the things that come in on, on these. So the font family changes or the font size. Um, and then you can see if, if the type changes or anything to do with the custom colors, we know we need to call this process pill badge type again, which will then obviously go through this process and make sure that the uh, colors are set accordingly. So that's all that really does um, for the property change. Um, I think that's pretty much covered everything there. I think I did meant I forgot to mention at the start um, there was another method in here on property change complete. Um, now that one, what that essentially does, if as you can see here, we've got lots of different properties coming in, and some of those properties could change. A group of them could all change and be sent in from Squirrel into the add-on. And what will happen is for each one of those changes, the on property change will. Um, it kind of it's stacked up and it will go through each one of those properties in turn and set the different values in in here. Now, if I had something crazy going on here where I needed to redraw a massive chart or something, I mean, this is quite a simple one. Um, but if I was doing a, a big chart, I might not want to call, you know, change this and then redraw the chart, change one of these and redraw the chart. And, you know, and, and then, you know, four of those properties come in, I could be calling the redraw on the chart four times in a row. So what actually happens is if there's a stack of um, changes coming in, what will happen is it'll process each of those, say four changes, it'll process all four of them. And then at the end of that stack, it will basically call this on property change complete. So if you've got like a, a pretty heavy render method or something, you could drop it into there. And then, you know, you're only calling that once after all those properties are set. But it's entirely up to you as the developer. That's what it's there for. You can use it or not use it. It's entirely up to you. So. Let me um, save that and let's go back into scroll a minute. So you can see now we've got 
our pill badge is drawn. Um, we should better change change the uh, the text and it changes. We can change the padding. Uh, we can change the primary color. Uh, we can go to custom. We can change those colors here. Very careful what I choose color wise, otherwise I'll incur the wrath of the Mel. That's awful. Well, we'll go with it, doesn't matter. Anyway, the colors changed. Um, and then you can change the fonts and uh, the font size. So that's all working there. One final thing to show on this, though, is that um, the as you can see that we've got the bounding box. So this is kind of not doing much at all. Now, there's two kind of when you're doing a visual component, there's going to be two kind of ways you're going to have this one. You're going to let the user decide how big you want this to be. So the user will decide how big they want the add on to be. And you might be drawing a chart or something in there. And then you will you will draw the chart based on the size that that squirrels told you that the user wants the add on to be. Um, yes, you might want to constrain proportions and what have you, but yes, you're going to get given the size and you're going to set and, and draw it. But this particular component, the way it works, um, it doesn't want to, it doesn't really care what, what squirrels told it the size to be because it's going based off the, the font. I mean, uh, the, sorry, the text we put in. We could have a, a very small thing or we could have a, a full blown sentence and we need the component to redraw itself accordingly. The font could be big, the padding could be small, and we need the component to actually say, no, I want to be this size. So we do have a mechanism for that. In the interest of time, we haven't got a lot of time left, so I'm just going to put that in just to show you it working. But what I'm going to do is I will be doing a uh, a blog post on this to um, for everyone to sort of you know understand how it all works. Um, but I'll throw it in there for now. So I'm just going to quickly give this a um, an ID and. Let's go in here. I'm going to use the view child so we can reference that. This last bit here. Save that. If we go into scroll now, you'll see that actually it's snapped to the size of it. So this is basically telling the, the component is now the add on is now in, in, in charge, not of its position. Obviously, Squirrel still gets to choose where the position is going to be, but the size of it is now determined by the add on. So if we try and the user tries to, to scale it, it's not going to scale. It's going to say no on this size. And then as we play around with the sizes and the the um, the text, it'll grow accordingly. Um, and yeah, so there's there's those two different ways of doing it. So uh, yeah, there will be a blog post following on that. Right, so that's kind of the component done. Um, the very next thing we need to do now is um, get it ready to um, to publish. So in order to do that, we need to stop stop running this in here, and we need to call uh, npm run build add on. Again, this is in the documentation, but um, we'll run that. That's actually building a production um, uh, version of your add on. Um, all those. Um, uh, console logs that were coming out from the scroll helper will not will not be displayed now. Um, and obviously, you should you should look at removing your own console logs when you go to a production version. And that is now built. If I jump into uh, here where the add-on is, um, example, you'll see here's all your files. If you go to the dist folder, uh, scroll add-on, these these are the files that you need to upload. Okay, so when I say upload. Um, it's up to you as the add-on developer to decide where you want to host your um, your add-on. When you come to submit it to the marketplace, you will then tell the market where where your your um, add-on is currently hosted. So for us, we use um, S3. So I've um, added, I've created a folder here. I'm ready to go. I'm going to drop this in here and upload it. And that's going to upload for us now. I'll bring this across. Right now that's uploaded. I can get the URL to where it is. Obviously, it's going to be different from wherever you've hosted yours. And then we can go into um, the uh, developer portal. So obviously there's a lot going on in here. Yours will have nothing in there at the start, but as you build up your add-ons, you'll start to see them in here. You can see things about whether they're private, whether they're public, um, they're in draft, whether it's a component or a function, usage count, stats, and all that sort of stuff. But for now, we're going to get jump into the creating an add-on. So we do that. Um, we're going to give our add-on a name. So uh, not build badge, build badge, um, the URL, HTTPS 
forward slash and then that URL I just grabbed. Now I said to you earlier about the when you're publishing a, a function or a component, this is the drop down I was referring to. So you can either say it's a component or a function. You can see connection there. That's not there at the moment and um, that, that will be coming. But at the moment, these two are supported. This particular one is a component. Um, Default width and height. Now, this is, as you can imagine, when you drag something from Squirrel from the library onto the canvas, you want it to be a, a certain size. So you, as an add-on developer, can say, no, I want my component to be this this particular size. I'm going to leave mine as default because, as as we know, this particular one it's, it's not listening to Squirrel. It's, it's in control of its size. So I'll, I'll ignore that for now. The next thing we need to do is upload uh, an icon. Now, if I can point you back to the documentation here, we've got some helpful stuff on publishing. Um, if you want to, when you're um, doing your um, submission, your add on submission. So, we've got some information here on your icon guidelines. It's a whole load of useful information here about um, do's and don'ts, um, things to think about the color, the size, the dimensions of your, um, your icon, and it needs to be in the SVG format. And then in a bit, we're going to also be uploading an image. So we've got some stuff here about the images that are going to appear in the marketplace. So again, a bit about the um, file types um, that are accepted, the dimensions, the actual file size and what have you. So again, I'd encourage you to read through the publishing and add-on section of the developer documentation. Right, so back to it. Um, so I'm going to upload that icon. So Mish has given me some an icon for this. I've got a... Um, little pill icon thing going on there. I'm going to um, put a name, pill badge, and uh, do a short description. And got version number, version 1.0. Uh, and then this is, again, this is your add-on. So you can, you can actually put in your support. You know, if you're going to support it, you put in your um, URL. If you've got a, any privacy po policy or terms of service for your add-on, you can put all that information in here. Pick your um, the category again for a private one. It's less important, but obviously, if you're going to post it to the um, to the marketplace and you want people to browse and find it, then it's it's you know good to think about your the category you're going to put it into. Um, and then we need to upload the image. So again, I've got this image that Mish made for me. Um, you need a featured image, and then you need a um, uh, another at least one other image. So I'm going to use the same one for the purposes of this demonstration. But what you can do is you can put multiple images up and then you can also put if you want to do some YouTube explainer videos on how your component works, you can um, put the, you know, upload a YouTube or Vimeo or, or Loom video into here as well and that'll appear. If you're doing something in your own organization and you're keeping it private, you want only certain people to see it, you can actually put the email addresses and things in here. We'll leave that for the time being. Let's just check I've got everything covered. I think we're good. Um, let's save and preview. OK, so this is what it's going to look like on the marketplace. Now, it's not available in the marketplace. It's still down as a private add on. So only I can see this, but I can send this, share this link around in my team so that others can have a look at it. Um, but it's got the, the featured image, um, the name of it, uh, description, and some other bits and pieces in here. But to get hold of this, I just click on get add on. And uh, if you're not logged in, it'll log you in. You got this. I've now got that add on. So we can actually have a look at it now. Now, when you do add a new add on, you do need to restart Squirrel. Um, it, when you add one to your product, you need to, um, so, excuse me, Squirrel, you need to restart it. So we'll do that briefly. There we go. OK. And if we look in the components now, we should see pill badge. There it is. So I've added that one in. We can click on it, put it on the, the canvas, and we've got it there. So we can say, hello, world. And it's there. We've got the padding we can change. We've got the fonts again that we can change. We can do the custom um, and all the rest of it. So that's essentially it. It's all in there um, and done and ready. Um, and that's it, built in about half an hour. I say we're on the top of the, the hour now, so let me just jump back to the slides. And the last thing, as I promised you, you can do some questions now. Um, Donald, I can hand back to you, but obviously if you take a note of that early access code, if you if you guys want to get involved and, and have a start, please take a note of that, get started. Um, and if you don't get it jotted down now, it will be on the back of the video anyway for you to look at. So yeah, Donald, back to you. Um, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Matt. That was a whistle stop tour. Amazing you got through it. Um, so coherently. So 
as Matt said, and I said, this will be available as an on-demand recording, so you can go through it um, at your, your own pace. But there is a lot in there, and as Matt said, the documentation online is um, is great. Um, and so you can you can use that as a supplement to this. So and we look forward to seeing what you guys um, make of it and what you uh, and the things that you um, you do with it. Um, so we have maybe a minute left, and if there are if there are any questions, I don't see any in the in the chat panel. Um, but uh, yes, Rich has put the um, the early access code in the chat panel if you want to copy it from there. Uh, before we close the, you'll lose the um, access to the chat. I think after we close the, con the conference call, so go into the chat panel and take that now. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't look like there are any um, further questions. So we will end there. Thank you very much to Matt. Um, you can take a well-earned rest. Not only did you do that, but you did it in like 40 degree heat as well. It's like because <laughs> for those of you, for those of you who aren't in the UK, we are we we are. Apparently, one of the hottest places in the world today. Only where 98% of the the world is less hot than the UK today. So, so Matt is a great a great um, a great run through. So, thanks everyone. I will um, I'll leave the, the 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 meeting open for a little while so you can copy that code. Um, but um, we'll say goodbye and um, see you next time. Thank you very much.